Hi, welcome to Teacher Inspiration Station. I'm Melissa Clark. In today's video, we're gonna talk about using puppetry in the classroom. Puppetry is an excellent way to engage your students and help build a positive classroom community. Now, this may sound strange or a little foreign to some of you, but trust me, the students love it. They eat it up, trust me. So what I do to introduce Fufu is I'll have the students sitting on the carpet and I'll say, you know what, boys and girls, I, I get all dramatic. <laughs> we have a very special visitor coming in this afternoon and they're excited. They're saying, who, who is it? And I'll say, oh, do you hear that? I think they're at the door. And then usually I have the puppet hiding somewhere outside the classroom, usually in a lunch bin or in a desk, somewhere where the students haven't seen it when they came into the classroom. And then I'll bring out Fufu. And the kids are saying, what? <laughs> because they were expecting a human to walk in the classroom. And I'll say, okay, boys and girls, this is Fufu. Everyone say, hi, Fufu. And they'll say, hi, Fufu. Now, you may get a couple of children who are giggling. If you do, you just need to stop. Remain focused, you're the teacher. Don't laugh with them, even though it may be tempting, but don't laugh with them. Just say, you know what, I'll wait. You don't even have to say you'll wait, just stop. And then the students will settle down because they want to know where you're going with this. <laughs> okay, so then you bring the puppet back up and you say, all right, boys and girls, this is Fufu. Uh, Fufu really wanted to visit our class. He heard such wonderful things about you. And then, you know, Fufu will say his little spiel. Now, when I was filming this video, I actually made Fufu talk and it may be a little annoying to some of you, but this will be the one and only time you'll hear me in my Fufu voice. So just a little disclaimer, okay? So I'll have Fufu say, Hello. Thank you so much for having me. And then the students will say, oh, and I'll ask the students, do you have any questions for Fufu? And then the students will ask different questions like, how old are you? Do you have any brothers or sisters? Whatever they want to ask. And then I put Fufu away after he's answered their questions. And that is how I introduce the puppet. Now the puppet will visit again, not that same day, but the puppet will visit again. So here are some ways that you can use the puppet in your classroom. Number one, instructional time. Now, I don't know about you, but my grade ones, a few of them have a really hard time writing. Like they're so reluctant to write. They're afraid of spelling words wrong. They're afraid of how they form their letters. Some of them just do not want to try writing. So I find that the puppet, in this case Fufu, really does help with that. So I'll bring Fufu in and I'll say, you know what? Fufu has a really hard time with writing. He doesn't want to try. And the kids will say, come on, Fufu, you can do it. We believe in you, come on. And then I'll say, come on, Fufu, try. And Fufu will say, okay, I'll try. And so I give him a marker and I actually have the rabbit hold the marker. He goes to the chart paper or the chalkboard, whatever. And um, he models for the students what I would like them to do. So he's sending out words, he's checking the word wall to spell you know, sight words that we have up there, and he's showing the students what I'd like them to do. And while the children are working, I may have a child who's reluctant to write, and I just remind them of Fufu, and that Fufu was reluctant to write, but he tried as well, and you want them to try. So it, it really does help. Like this simple puppet, practicing how to write, really does help students practice to write. Who knew? One way you can use a puppet is for social skills development. Now what I do is I notice some of the problems that some of my students are having and I'll have Fufu come in maybe during you know a class meeting. I'll have Fufu come in and he'll share his problem with the students. So maybe there's someone who keeps hitting him or someone keeps taking his lunch whatever problem you want Fufu to have. And then the students could come up with solutions to help Fufu and that helps with social skills development and helps them become problem solvers. And then Fufu will take, will pick something for him to try and Fufu will try it and he'll come back and he'll let the students know what happened, how it went, 
if it worked or if it didn't work. So great way. Number three, English language learners. A lot of students who are learning to speak English may be reluctant to speak. They may feel embarrassed of saying something wrong or making a mistake. And the puppet helps because they know the puppet isn't going to judge them and they are a lot more comfortable talking to a puppet than maybe me or their peers. So the puppet does help. Now here are some tips to help make having a puppet in your class go a lot more smoothly. Number one, introduce the puppet once you've had a solid classroom management foundation. And the reason for this is if you introduce it the first day where the students don't really know you, they don't really know what to expect, you may have some students who get really silly. They may think it's so funny that the teacher has this puppet and they can get carried away. But once students know what's appropriate and inappropriate behavior, then the likelihood of that happening gets diminished. Now you may have a couple giggles, but it's easy to stop it and nip it in the bud at the very beginning. So that's how, why I introduce it once I've had my rules and everything established and the students know what to expect. Number two, have a puppet with a nice, calm personality. I could have a puppet that's very energetic and, hi, how are you? I'm so excited for the sense of here. Oh my gosh, I'm so wonderful. And of course, you know that's gonna get the students excited as well. So having a puppet who's shy and quiet and sensitive to noise helps the children also be calm and quiet. Number three, if you are having different puppets, have your puppets have different personalities. So, you know, Fufu, he's nice, he's calm, he's quiet, he's shy, and may have another puppet who's a bit more energetic. And there's a place for that, depending on what my focus is. But just like different books and different movies have different characters, have your puppets have different characters as well. But definitely have one that's calm, <laughs> so that the students, when that puppet comes out, they know, okay, this puppet doesn't like noise. Good tip. <laughs> Number four, if you are gonna do more than one puppet, introduce your puppet one at a time. Don't bring out all 20 puppets one day and do this big show for them. It, it, it gets, it's too overwhelming for the kids. So one at a time, you'll have one maybe for a while and then you'll bring someone out and you'll switch them up or whatever you wanna do, but introduce them one at a time. Tip number five, have your puppet stored in a little bag or something. So when you have your puppet out and it's time to put him away, you just put him in the bag and once it's in the bag, it's done, it's gone, bye-bye. Moving on. Now I've done this successfully with kindergarten and grade one students. I did do it with a grade one, two class when I used to teach a grade one, two split, but a couple of the older students, a couple of the boys, they were too cool for Fufu and they had a reputation to maintain and they couldn't be loving on this puppet. <laughs> but you definitely can use puppets in older grades. I just wouldn't use it in this way, but you can have students create puppets. They can do different things. They can do skits. They can um, do certain social skills development, get creative, but older students definitely can use puppetry in the classroom. I even have older students who I used to teach in grade five and grade six who come visit me and they ask about Fufu. They remember Fufu. It's just a, a part in, in their memory that they remember this fun thing that we did in our class. And parents love it as well. I have parents coming up to me asking me, who's Fufu? My child keeps talking about this Fufu character. And you know, I mean, the kids know that it's me talking, obviously. My mouth is moving, da, da, da. And the, I've had kids ask me, uh, say to me, Miss Clark, your mouth is moving. And my response to that is, Fufu speaks through me. And they'll say, oh, <laughs> you know? So it's fun. I mean, the kids, like I said, they know it's me. But that age group, they love imagination. They love the magic. They're just really into it. So. Yes, they know that Fufu isn't real, but they like to pretend that he is and they like to have fun with it. So you have fun with it too. I'd love to hear how this goes for you, but leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you're gonna try this out this school year or how you're gonna try using puppets this year. And if you like my video, please give this a thumbs up. And of course, please consider subscribing if you like my channel. I'll see you all in the next video. 
Bye. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>